This short animated video explains the basic concept of binomial distribution with help of some relevant examples. We'll also look at what is the difference between binomial and Bernoulli distribution. So please don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax and enjoy this video on binomial distribution. Binomial distribution, which is one of the most widely used probability distribution was discovered by James Bernoulli in the early 17th century. In statistics, binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution that gives only two possible outcomes in experimental or a trial, that is success or failure. The underlying assumption here is that binomial distribution there are only two possible outcomes of a trial. And each trial has same probability of success. Each trial is mutually exclusive, that means independent of one another. Binomial distribution is closely related to Bernoulli distribution. The Bernoulli distribution represents the success or failure of a single Bernoulli trial. The tossing of a fair coin fixed number of times is a Bernoulli process, and the outcome of such tosses is represented by binomial distribution. In simple terms, Bernoulli distribution is a type of binomial distribution or is a special case of binomial distribution. For example, flipping a coin is considered a Bernoulli trial. Each trial can only have two values, either head or tail. Both have 50% probability of occurrence. Each success has same probability, that is probability of flipping a head is 0.5 or tail is also 0.5. And as a result of one trial, do not influence the result of another. Bernoulli distribution is a special case here of binomial distribution where the number of trials is n is equal to 1. Let us look at the binomial distribution formula. We stand for P and P, where n factorial by r factorial into r n minus r factorial into p raised to the power r into 1 minus p n minus r. This formula would be looking very complex to you, but it is not that complex. Where n here represents the number of trials, r represents the number of success among n trials, p is the probability of success in one trial, q is the probability of failure, where q you can calculate as 1 minus p. So we will look at this when we apply the, in the formula. This is very simple formula, it looks very complex here, but we'll see here in the examples. Now let us look at the properties of binomial distribution. Each trial, that is each toss in our case, has only two possible outcomes, head or tail, yes or no, success or failure. The probability of outcome of each trial or toss remain fixed over the period of time. With fair coin, the probability of head remains 0.5 for each toss regardless of the number of times the coin is tossed. The trial are statistically independent. That means the outcome of one toss does not affect the outcome of other toss. The number of observations or trials is fixed. In other words, you can only figure out the probability of something happening if you do not do it certain number of times. This is a common sense. If you toss a coin, the probability of getting a tail is 50%. If you toss a coin 20 times, your probability of getting a tail is very, very close to 100%. Now let us understand the binomial distribution mean, variance and standard deviation. Binomial distribution mean is calculated as mu is equal to NP variance as np into 1 minus p and standard deviation as under root of np into 1 minus p where p is the probability of success and q is the probability of failure which is calculated as q is equal to 1 minus p so if uh, p and q are numerically less than or equal to 1 that means npq variance is always less than NP mean. When P is equal to 0.5, 
distribution is symmetric around the mean. But when p is equal to greater than 0 0.5, this distribution is skewed to the left or it is negatively skewed. When p is less than 0 0.5, distribution is skewed to the right or it is positive skewed. Now let us see the first example to understand this concept. 10 parts which were manufactured are randomly selected for a particular batch where it is believed that the percentage non-confirming or defective is 15%. What is the probability that 2 out of 10 parts are defective? Now when we talk about defective here, it is either defective or non-defective. Non so we apply this concept. This is the formula ncx x into p to the power x into 1 minus p and minus x. Now we know uh, that what is we need to calculate the probability that 2 out of 10 parts are defective. So n is 10 and x is 2. The percentage defective is 0.15. Now we need to first calculate ncx. So ncx would be that is 10 c2. Out of 10, two parts are defective. So we'll calculate the formula is 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 10 minus 2 factorial. I hope you know how to calculate factorials. So we get 10 factorial by 2 factorial into 8 factorial. So we'll break 10 factorial into 10 into 9 into 8 factorial divided by 2 into 1 into 8 factorial. We'll cancel 8 factorial from numerator and denominator. So we get 90 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So we get 45. So 10 C2 value is 45. Now we'll put this uh, value of 45 in the formula for P x equal to 2 for 2 defective. 45 into 0 0.0025 that is 0.15 per square into 1 minus 0 0.5 that is 0.85 raised to power 10 minus 2 that is 8. We get P x at 2 equal to 27.59 that is the probability that a sample of 10 will have 52 non-confirming is 0.279 or 27.59 percentage now taking the same example like what we have so what is that now we have to calculate what is the probability that uh, we have less than two non-confirming parts in the previous case it was exactly 2 in this case we have to find what is if it is less than 2 in this case uh, we have to find less than 2 so it means either it is 1 or it is 0 so we have to add both these at 1 at net 0 so let us use the same formula and apply first at 0 so we have 10 c0 into 0.15 raised to power 0 to 1 into minus 0.5 10 to power and minus 0. Same for 1. We will calculate for 1 as well. Now we will calculate 10c0 which is coming as 1 and we will calculate 10c1 which is coming as 10 here. I hope you know how to calculate 10c0 and 10c1. Now we will put uh, in the formula and add both these for less than 2. So we get x less than 2 for values. We get total value as 0.554. The conclusion that we get is the probability that a sample size of 10 will have less than 2 conformity is 0.5443 or 54.43%. Notice, let us take another example to understand how to calculate mean variance and standard deviation for a binomial distribution. Imagine that you have a fair coin you flip the coin 10 times and if the coin is fair then we have to calculate mean variance and the standard deviation so n number of trials here is 10 when you're flipping the coin 10 times uh, probability of success is 0.5 because the coin is fair property of failure here is 1 minus p that is 1 minus 0 0.5 equal to 0 0.5 now first formula for mean is mean is equal to mu is equal to n into p so n here is 10 and p is 0.5 so we get mean as 5 variance as sigma square is equal to np into 1 minus p again we'll put the values here that we have have 10 into 0.5 into 1 minus 0.5 so we get 2.5 
standard deviation is this under root of variance. So whatever the variance we get 1.5, we under root we get 1.58. This is how we calculate mean variance and standard deviation in the binomial distribution. Okay, now that you have understood this concept of binomial distribution, let us see how much you exactly know. We have a small quiz now. First question. In a binomial distribution, if P, Q and N are the probability of success, failure and the number of trials respectively, then how will you calculate the variance? Is it NP, NPQ, NP square Q or NPQ square? Second question. In a binomial distribution, if N is the number of trials and P is the probability of success, and the mean value is given by A, N, P, B, N, C, P, and D, N, P, into bracket 1 minus P. Third question. In the binomial distribution, the mean and the variance are equal. Is this a true statement or a false statement? You can leave your answers in the comment section below. So that is all on binomial distribution. If you like it, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos. Click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon and follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Telegram. I will share the links in the description below.